are the Rebels really the good guys in Star Wars? We'll find out right after this. Hey everybody, I am Taylor from Beard vs. Geek, where I show you it is okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. Today we're talking about Star Wars, and I'm going to give you 10 reasons why the Rebel Alliance is actually the bad guys in the Star Wars saga. Now some of this comes from Rogue One, so spoilers. So in no particular order, let's start with number one. Killing informants in the off chance that they will talk. That's right, at the very beginning of Rogue One, we see Cassian kill in cold blood his informant. Supposedly a friend who, yes, he was nervous because obviously he's performing an illegal act, but he was trying to help out the rebellion. And in return, what does he get? A laser blast to the back. Good job, Rebels. You're the good guys, right? Moving on, number two. Breaking out a convicted criminal and then manipulating said criminal to do your bidding. Now, I'm not exactly 100% familiar with recruitment tactics of military groups, but as far as I know, kidnapping criminals and then manipulating them to do your bidding is not an okay thing to do. Now, the Empire in this situation is actually the good guys. They found someone who is breaking the law. They tried and convicted that person who was breaking the law, and they sentenced them to literally help build a better community. Since Jan Erso was going off to a labor camp. Now, labor camps are not just doing stupid labor that gets nothing accomplished. You're actually building something. What you work on goes to better other people outside of yourself and help civilization as a whole. Therefore, the rebels, by doing this act, are not just saying this is how we get new recruits. They're also saying we don't believe that people should repay their debts to society. Number three, performing assassinations. Now, in the real world, assassinations are sometimes necessary, but generally speaking, they're not an okay thing to do. Well, according to the Rebel Alliance, they're perfectly fine. So who do you think they're going to assassinate? Maybe the source of all their problems? The Emperor himself? Nah. Instead, we'll kill a scientist. That's right. In Rogue One, the main mission of the Rebels is to kill a scientist who was persuaded to be the architect of the Death Star. Now, they could have performed some more intelligence, found out what the guy's motives were, whether or not he was a horrible person, but no, they'll just kill him because of his job. Because after all, no one else could do that job, right? Number four. Staging attacks in places where civilians can be wounded and killed. Also in Rogue One, we see a group of rebels who stage an attack against a couple of troopers in their transport tank thing um, in a very busy marketplace, therefore putting the lives of innocent men, women, and children in danger. At least when you have government power fighting against government power, you have clear uniforms, you have clear battlefields. Well, when you have a terrorist group fighting against a government state, battles take place around innocent people. Battles take place where people who are not combative personnel can be killed. Sound familiar? Number five, killing non-combative military personnel. Now, when two government bodies are fighting, then there's an understanding that if the soldier across from you is not a direct threat to you, then that soldier can be taken as a prisoner of war. The rebels close the door on that very quickly. If you uh, wear the uniform of the Empire, you are just as evil as the Emperor himself. Which gives you a new look as far as the destruction of the Death Star goes. Bob down in accounting, who is just making sure that people got paid, and punching a clock to get a decent job, just as evil as the Emperor. Jill, in HR, who was trying to make sure that everyone was treated fairly, just as evil as the Emperor. Steve, the sous chef, making sure that people got fed, just as evil as the Emperor. See where I'm going with this? Whereas if it was actually two governments fighting against each other, Bob, Jill, and Steve could be taken as prisoners of war. This was not the case with the Rebel Alliance. If you wear the uniform, if you punch the clock, if you help the Emperor in any way, you're a dead person. Number six, plunging the galaxy into a massive recession. Twice. 
Now, if you've seen my previous video, Seven Good Things the Empire Has Actually Done, this will sound rather familiar. And if you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch it. It's a pretty cool video. Now, the Emperor and the Empire itself has established a very clear and working system of economy that stretches not only in a couple of systems, but the entire freaking galaxy. What do the rebels do? By blowing up a couple of Death Stars, they plunge people into debt. They plunge people into a recession. Now we've just dealt with a, you know, one planet or a couple of country recession going on very recently, and we had the Great Depression back in the 30s. That's one planet. What about an entire galaxy? For more on that, go ahead and watch that video. Number seven, waging a guerrilla war against a system of government that helps out quadrillions of people throughout an entire galaxy. This may seem obvious, but this is pretty much the definition of a rebel terrorist, okay? Someone who attacks and who outright tries to overthrow a proper system of government that helps out trillions of people. Now, is the empire perfect? No, of course it isn't. No system of government is perfect. Again, you should probably watch that video that I made previously. It will answer a lot of your questions. But simply waging a guerrilla style warfare causes massive amounts of collateral damage. The fact that the rebels do not wear any uniforms unless they're in a fighter plane means that it is very difficult for the Empire to determine exactly who is their enemy. Therefore, civilian casualties are going to happen. This occurs whenever a guerrilla war is waged and there are no clear uniforms. Of course there's going to be civilian casualties because the soldiers can't clearly understand who is their enemy and who is not their enemy. The soldiers, of course, are going to treat everyone with heavy suspicion because at any one time, someone could pull out a blaster and shoot you. Now you might say, in the first movie, there was Alderaan, there was Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru, there was the Jawas. Well, Alderaan we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Let's address the Jawas and Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen. The Jawas are criminals. Not only did they steal droids and then turn around and sell them to other people without trying to find an original owner, without looking for any sort of bill of sale, but they found droids that had top secret military information. Therefore, the Jawas coming in contact with this information and being criminals in the first place, yeah, they're gonna die because holding that top secret information means that you're a rebel. Therefore, a traitor to the empire and a outright insurgent. Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru, pretty much the same. They had these droids that had top secret information in them and they didn't just have them for, you know, an hour. They had them for at least a day, possibly two. That is more than enough time for them to make copies and distribute it to other rebels if they were rebels. So of course they're going to be classified as hostiles when they had this information and they had a son that they could not account for. That son was probably relaying that information to other rebels. Now, if the Empire was so dead set on killing innocent civilians, they could have very easily whopped out Moss Eisley, which does have a strong criminal element to it and uh, could have easily solved their problems. But they didn't. They sent troopers to go door to door checking IDs, making sure that innocent people were not in harm's way, unlike the rebels who do not care. Number eight, celebrating in the killing of innocent people and taking part in cannibalism. At the end of Return of the Jedi, there is a massive party scene where they celebrate the destruction of Death Star 2, which had a lot of engineers, contract workers, people who were building the damn things, civilian labor, and then the Ewoks are there, and they're playing drums off of presumably just the helmets of their fallen enemies. Well, previously, those Ewoks were going to eat uh, Han, Leia, Luke. So if there's a giant party, there's going to be some drinking, there's going to be some food. The Rebels ate people. The Empire doesn't do that. Number nine, convincing civilian planets to supply them with munitions, therefore putting them in danger. Now, the Rebels need to get weapon supplies from somewhere, right? Well, according to canon, they got Alderaan to supply them with munitions. They also used Alderaan's political envoys as mules for passing along information and supplies to rebel forces, therefore making Alderaan not an innocent planet after all. Alderaan 
was directly opposed to the empire and was committing treason. And most systems of government today, committing treason during a time of war is punishable by death. And that is the same law that the empire used. They were in a state of war with the rebels. The rebels convinced the planet to supply them with munitions that would directly be used to fight the emperor and the empire, giving Governor Tarkin the proper authority and reason to blow up their planet. Number 10, using mind control for their own gain. That's right, like several terrorist organizations today, the rebels use brainwashing and mind control in order to achieve their own ends. In the first movie, Obi-Wan Kenobi uses it to get past a checkpoint. Later on, after Luke is trained in the Force, he uses it for his own gains to make sure that he is safe and protected and to get his friends out of danger, which he put in danger in the first place. If you like that video, go ahead and subscribe. Great videos like this are coming out every Wednesday and Sunday, where I show you it is okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. If you like Star Wars, you can go ahead and watch these videos right here. Awesome ones about seven reasons why the Empire is actually good, and how Luke Skywalker couldn't have possibly blown up the Death Star. Because after all, if the women don't find you manly, they should at least find you geeky. And until next time, don't go shaving on me.